Welcome to Meet the Court. I'm your host, Joa Johnson. Meet the Court is brought to you as a public service by the Superior Court of New Jersey in Atlantic and Cape May counties, as well as the Cape May Institute of Technology to better inform you, the public, on the workings of the court and the role of the judiciary in our communities. Today's topic, adult drug court. What is it? Who does it serve? And what are the community benefits of this diversionary <coughs> program? Our guest today, the Honorable Mark Sanson, presiding judge of the Chancery Part and Drug Court, and John Bond, Court Services Supervisor in the Atlantic County Probation Office, overseeing Adult Drug Court program. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, Jawad. Before we begin, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Judge, we'll start with you. Very good. Um, yeah, my name is Mark Sanson. I'm uh, a native of Atlantic City. Um, I've lived in South Jersey, Atlantic Cape May County my entire life. I practiced law for approximately 30 years before becoming a judge. Since I became a judge, uh, I've been a judge for about 11 years. Um, I practiced in the family division, the criminal division, and I took over the drug court in Cape May and Atlantic counties about a year ago. Okay. And there we are. Thank you. John, please tell us about your background. Thanks, Gerard. I actually started with the judici judiciary in 2001 as a probation officer, and I took over the mental health caseload at that point in time. In 2007, I came on board as a drug court supervisor. <coughs> you know, prior to 2001, um, I was a, a youth worker, foster home coordinator, drug and alcohol assessment worker, all sorts of different things within the human services field. And I've been in the area for approximately 21 years at this point in time. Okay. Well, now that we know a little bit more about you, let's turn to our topic. Judge, the first question is for you. What is the philosophy of drug court? Addiction is a disease. We understand a lot about the science of addiction at this point in time. And what we try and do in drug court is to match the science of addiction and the proven nature of the, of the disease of addiction with recovery. Abstinence, being clean and sober for a period of time does not equal recovery. The theory of drug court is that to deal with some of the, uh, the psychological, the behavioral uh, aspects of addiction, the only real, real answer is treatment. Treatment really is two things. One, an understanding of your disease, and two, the adoption of a sober lifestyle uh, with sober friends and, uh, and uh, being part of a sober support network through your AA, NA meetings and uh, the sober lifestyle. Until we found out, until someone can adopt a, a sober lifestyle, abstinence alone from drugs or alcohol is not enough to lead to a long-term recovery. And I think that, in a few words, is the, re is, the, is the philosophy behind modern drug court in New Jersey. Okay. So how does the drug court process differ from traditional criminal court cases? <clears throat> the other courts in Mays Landing and in Cape May Courthouse in the criminal division are based upon a principle of crime and punishment. Um, if you commit a crime, we're going to assess whether you either uh, uh, admit to the commission of the crime, you're found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt by a jury, um, and then the judge's function is to conduct the trial and then to determine what the reasonable and fair punishment is for that crime. Drug court is a treatment court. We don't deal with the crime and punishment model. We understand that addiction is a disease and we don't punish people for having a disease. That's an archaic concept, realized now as such by our courts, by the judiciary. So what we do is we take people into drug court and we provide treatment, not punishment. Treatment itself is a continuum based on need, not based on guilt, not based on whether you're bad or good. Um, most of the people in drug court are very good people who have a disease. So we try to, we try to meet on a very scientific basis, the degree of addiction and the type of addiction with the appropriate treatment. And the advantage we have in drug court is we have the resources to pay for that treatment. In many cases, people who have these addictions uh, don't have access to, uh, to doctors or to treatment facilities because they don't have the appropriate insurance and uh, they don't have the money to do it. Drug court does provide the resources to provide access to first class treatment. So what role does the drug court judge play in drug court? 
Drug court judge, I think more than anything else, and John can comment on this because he's also in drug court with the probation department, which is another integral part of our operation. But I'm the, I'm the, I guess the, uh, the, the traffic cop at the, at the uh, foot of drug court. You have to come in, you have to convince me uh, that you're serious about wanting to recover and that you have a capacity to recover. We perform a task evaluation therapeutic assessment services for the court. It's called a task evaluation. We answer two questions before they come in. One, are they clinically dependent upon drugs or alcohol? And two, what is the level of treatment? It's my job to, uh, to take them into drug, drug court and to make sure that the type of treatment that they're matched with is appropriate for their level of addiction. And it is extremely successful. Um, it is successful in an area where there's very little success outside of long-term follow-up. The, the key to drug court is we have the ability to follow up on, on a uh, defendant because these are criminal defendants who are accused of committing an indictable offense. Uh, we have the ability to follow them up, up to five years. But there have been some very exciting uh, movements in terms of our drug court uh, manual that reduces that to two and a half years of follow-up, and that has been a very successful development. And that's really the story that John and I are here to tell, is how drug court is changing to meet the needs of more of our citizens in New Jersey for this terrible epidemic that we see going on around us. And you talk about the terrible epidemic that we see around us, that includes the opioid epidemic and issues of that nature. I do know that nationally, drug court has models have been um, really expanded. So can we talk about briefly how the drug court is funded? Right, we're funded by, through the judiciary of the state of New Jersey. We also have access to other uh, types of state and federal grants. Um, all of that serve as a conduit to go out to helping addicts in our community. The truly exciting thing about uh, Atlantic and Cape May County, which is one judicial group called a vicinage, is that we've expanded our drug court in just the last year from about 350 to almost 750 people. In Atlantic and Cape May counties, we have probably the largest drug court in the state of New Jersey, uh, which means that we can affect more people's lives, we can get more people into long-term recoveries. Uh, that combined with our new drug court process, which shortens the length of probation to potentially two and a half years from five years, we can move more people on a continuous, base, continuous basis through drug court and therefore get more people into long lasting recoveries. This is Meet the Court. I'm your host, Jawad Johnson. We'll be back with Judge Sanson and John Bond after this message. Hello, my name is Tom Hegarty. I'm a sergeant with the Cape May County Sheriff's Office. And some of the things that you should know when you enter any of our courthouses is that once you come in, you're going to be screened by an officer at the front desk. So what you should not have on you is any weapons, tools, anything that's going to slow down that process. You're going to come in, put all your metal objects up on the counter, step through the metal detector, listening to the officer's direction. Once you step through, he'll let you know whether you can continue on or whether you should stop. If he stops you, you may have to be wanted with the, with the hand wand. Detect anything else that you may have on you that that's not picking up. So to speed your, your trip along and to help come in, because there may be lines when you come in and there may be delays. So you want to get here early and you also want to have less objects on you that will impede your progress. Welcome to Meet the Court. I'm your host, Jawa Johnson. My guests today are Judge Mark Sanson and John Bond and we're discussing adult drug court and its overall benefits to the community. So John, how does adult drug court probation differ from regular probation? There's quite a, uh, quite a bit difference between the two. On, a, on an adult regular probation caseload, you might see your officer for maybe once a month. Uh, you may be tested once every three months, depending on whether it's been ordered by the court or not. So there's not really that much of a, a relationship that, that's developed at, at, by that officer with the client. Uh, and again, depending on what their list, risk level is, it could be coming, coming in even less than that. Now, on a uh, drug court supervision, it's a completely different ball game. Uh, the, the probation officer is kind of part uh, social worker, 
part law enforcement and part sounding board. So they see their people at least twice a week. They're seeing them when they see the judge on a Tuesday, but they're also out in the community seeing them in their, in their jobs, at their homes, in the field. Every time that they see that person, they're also being tested as well. So they have to test them a minimum of twice a, twice a week throughout most of their time with us in drug court as a part of the random drug screening to ensure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and uh, remaining in their recovery mode and uh, following through with everything that the, uh, the judge is instructing them to do. So by, by having that kind of close relationship with the defendant, you become very invested in their recovery and very invested in them kind of succeeding. You know, our goal is, as probation officers in the drug court is to get them through the process help them with as much as we can, getting systems set up, getting different services set up, so that when they're done with drug court, we'll never see them again as a uh, future participant. They can come back and see us as a company, somebody, somebody just dropping in and say, hey John, how you doing? I'm doing well, as opposed to seeing them back in front of a Judge Sanson or Judge Delory or somebody else with more criminal uh, activity. So it's a lot more intensive. Uh, also our drug court probation officers are on call 24 hours, seven hours, uh, seven days a week. So if something ha is happening after hours, they can call them for emergency basis as I as am I as well. So they always have that kind of conduit to the court system after hours as well as during the day. We always like them to rely on their regular support system, but we're there as a backup for them at all times as well. Okay. Judge, what can participants expect from drug court from your perspective? Well, they they plead into drug court and the first thing they do is get into treatment. As I said before, treatment is a continuum based upon need. So we go on the low end of need, outpatient, which is AA, NA, other 12-step type meetings. We go from there to an IOP intensive outpatient. And then for a higher level of need, they go to short-term inpatient, which is your traditional 28-day program. And thereafter, we have long-term inpatient, which is four to six months, all of which are paid for by the state of New Jersey through the drug court program. In the short term or long term, we also could have an additional layer called a halfway house, which is four months after they are released from their inpatient, uh, and that would be to stabilize their housing, stabilize their medical conditions, and provide that much more supervision before they go back into the community and they then res resume their, uh, their, pl their place in the community, getting back all the things they've lost. One of the continual themes of drug court is to remind people what they've lost through their addiction. They lose their license, they lose their job, they lose their families, they lose their integrity, and then thereafter at the end they lose their freedom. What we try to do through the drug court process is give them back each one of those things. And now we have a two and a half uh, year program, a 30 month program, um, when we graduate people at the end of the day, we, they pretty much have all the things that they've lost back Plus, the great innovation in modern drug court in New Jersey, which makes the program so unique, is we can provide a full and complete expungement of their record. Many, many convictions. We, I expunged somebody who had 72 convictions um, uh, just the other day. So we expunged their record. So when we say at the end of two and a half years they're getting a second chance, it's a legitimate second chance without an extensive criminal record because we all know that when you go to get a job, you're asked two questions, what's your name? They do ask that, then second, have you ever been convicted of a crime? A drug court graduate can circle no, or check no, because in fact, their, their record has been expunged. So the whole program is really based upon uh, treating the entire individual in a holistic manner, and then at the end, giving them a second chance at life. That's why the program is successful. So John, from your perspective, what can participants expect from drug court, from probation? Well, they, from probation, they expect uh, to be told up front, you know, what the realities of the situation are. They expect, to, they can expect to, to be heard. They can expect their, their concerns and their, their interests to be looked at. Uh, they can expect to uh, be told on a regular basis what the realities are and what's truth and, and not true. There's a lot of misconceptions and misinformation amongst the uh, participants community as far as what's uh, right and wrong and what they can expect and not, not expect. But uh, the, the, the drug court probation officer will always be up front with them. And again, they're the conduit for the rest of the team as far as ensuring that uh, what the judge is, is telling them, what the rest of the team is telling them is getting reiterated to the, uh, to the participant. So honesty and integrity would be the main things. Okay. Honesty is key. Yeah. You can't recover without mm -hmm. honesty. It's basic AA and NA literature that uh, honesty, anybody who can be honest can recover. 
And honesty begins not only with honesty of the court, that's small potatoes, honesty with yourself. And the honesty that's required is, I have an addiction, addiction is a disease, and that it has, I have lost my ability to control my actions. Yeah. Yeah. Once you have come to that, you're honest about mm -hmm. it, you can recover. Yeah. And just to, to piggyback on that, their honesty will dictate where they go with their probation officer. If they're upfront and honest with the officer, then we're more apt to be, or we're, we're more able to help them through their addiction and through their, their issues. If they're not honest, then we have issues with able to kind of deal with what we have to deal with them. And we're not able to put them in the right direction, or point them in the right direction, if they don't tell us what's happening with them on a regular basis. This is Meet the Court, and I'm your host, Jawah Johnson. We'll be back with Judge Sanson and John Bond after this message. Hi, my name is Barbara. Did you know that the Superior Courts of New Jersey value your feedback? In each courthouse, we have surveys throughout the building. We ask that you take the time and fill one out or take it with you if you don't have the time and send it back to us. Or go online at njcourts.gov. Welcome back to Meet the Court. I'm your host, Joao Johnson. My guests today are Judge Mark Sanson and John Bond, and we're continuing our conversation about adult drug court and its overall benefits to the community. So, John, who comprises the drug court team you spoke about in the last segment? Yeah, this is another unique thing to drug court, where the regular uh, uh, trial court, you would have a prosecutor, public defender, and the judge would meet the arbitrator. In, uh, in drug court, you have the prosecutor who's in, in drug court, you have a public defender or an attorney, you have probation officers, you have a coordinator, the judge is the captain driving the ship, and you also have clinicians that are uh, involved in uh, ensuring that the people are doing uh, the appropriate level of care as well. Judge, from your purview, what does, how does the team approach work uh, in drug court and what are the advantages? It is so different from traditional, uh, the traditional status of a judge and, a, and, and lawyers in a courtroom. Um, we, are, we are clearly a team, we're truly a team. We sit down to staff every week, every single person in drug court, and we're talking about 750 total people. It takes a long time to staff them. In Atlantic or Cape May, we sit down with probably around 40 people around a very large table. We bring up every person in drug court, their successors, their failures. It's all leading to the actual drug court appearance, which is usually in Tuesdays in Atlantic and Wednesdays in Cape May, at which time my job is to engage each and every participant in a two or three minute conversation about what they've been, what they've been successful with and unsuccessful with in the last week since that I've seen them, depending upon the phase they're in drug court, it may be two weeks, it may be a month, and it may be two months, depending upon what phase of drug court they're in. There's four phases of drug court. Um, the team advises me in a holistic manner as to how they're progressing uh, to get to know who's telling me the truth, who isn't telling me the truth, what problems there are, what trouble spots there are, how we can address it. Um, this addiction, as I said, is a disease and it is an adversary to treatment. So it is not easy. It is not, it does not follow a straight path quite often. There are relapses, there are falling off along the roads. Uh, so we deal with all of these. We don't deal with it from a criminal court perspective. Our answer is not jail. We know people do not recover in jail. We know people are warehoused in jail and these are, you, these are not violent people. Uh, these are people who have a disease and we try to deal with the entire person with the idea that treatment is the answer and drug court does provide treatment. So if some of our viewers are wondering, what are the actual benefits to the drug court participants themselves beyond just saving themselves from their addictions? Yeah. Well, if, it, if, the, if the only thing you got were saving yourself from your addiction, it would be the gift of life. I think you're right. But the, <clears throat> the, the what, what, it, what recovery is, is two things. One, an understanding of your disease, the psychological, behavioral, neurological condition we call addiction. And two, and very importantly, <clears throat> certainly as importantly, is developing a sober support network, a meeting that you go to, a group of sober friends that you have. You often have to get rid of non-sober friends. You have to realize the triggers in your life. 
the triggers that make you want to use. A trigger is something that creates a certain reaction in your brain that makes you want to use drugs or alcohol. People have to learn how to recognize what the triggers are and instead of succumbing, giving in to the triggers, they have to learn to deal, to go to a meeting, to call their sponsor. These things work. That recovery is possible. When people come before me at the very beginning, they often say, Judge, I don't, I'm not sure I can make it. I'm an addict. I'm having a very difficult time stopping. They all know intellectually by that time that it's destroying their lives. And sometimes they despair because they've tried so many times. Uh, drug court works because we're able to provide some new solutions and we're able to finance those solutions with treatment. And at the end, we're able to give them a second start, which motivates a lot of these people. They don't want to be caught in their addictions. They don't want to fail. They want to get back with their families. They want to get back with their kids. They want to get back from the, the alienation from their, many times from their backgrounds. Um, and we can, although not all the time, we can in many occasions successfully complete that process in 30 months. Uh, it's an incredible process um, and uh, for anybody out there who has an addictive situ addiction and has been charged with a crime, drug court is a very viable alternative. And we invite people to find out about us and to, uh, to come to drug court and the judiciary is supporting this program uh, to the maximum extent possible at this point in time. So, John, what treatment modalities are available to individuals who are in drug court? There's actually a wide variety of treatment modalities, and that's a, it's actually expanded over the past year, where before we never uh, allowed anybody with medicated assistant treatment in, but that is, is now open uh, to people as well. So if you have an opioid uh, addiction, you can look at uh, methadone, suboxone, vivitrol, naltrexone as a, <coughs> uh, a tool to help you get through uh, the early part of your addictions. You also have uh, long-term inpatient uh, treatment that's available short-term inpatient treatment, uh, all the spectrum of outpatient from IOP, which is intensive outpatient, to the relapse recovery to one-to-ones. So whatever that person needs to kind of get them through the process and to get them to those life-changing events, those are all the modalities that's available. So are there any other topics or parts of the conversation that we haven't covered in our talk so far? Yeah, I, I, the, the one thing I wanted to stress to people that our program has substantially changed in reaction to evidence-based solutions which have been developed on a national level. Um, the state of New Jersey has reacted quickly and our vicinage in Atlantic and Cape May County and Judge Mendez, uh, who is, is my boss, essentially the assignment judge, has 100% supported the program and supported all these changes. We've reduced the size of, we, excuse me, we've increased the size of drug court by almost 100%. We have engaged in and allowed medically assisted treatment, which is necessary in some of these cases, at least for a period of time. We have uh, supported people and, and, and job efforts. We formed community partnerships to enable people to get a job. One of the ne necessities of recovery is finding a job. And before you finish your four phases of drug court, you will get a job on the books. It's a requirement. So, Putting the addict back together is the job of the drug court team. It's a team approach. We all have an equal say in what happens. Uh, we have a very experienced and dedicated group of people. And the only thing I can say to people who are watching this who are in despair, we all know family members. We all know friends of family members. We have friends, or maybe it's us. We all know people with addiction issues. This is an epidemic. It is killing a generation of Americans. There are things you can do. Drug court, while maybe not the answer, is an answer to many people who want to change. And the whole key to being successful in drug court is your desire to change. Recovery is change, and that's what we try to accomplish. Well, we are just about out of time. I'd like to thank our guests for joining us today on Meet the Court. Thank you. Thank you, Juwad. I also would like to thank you, our audience, for tuning in. This is Juwad Johnson. Goodbye for now.